Okay guys, let's say you just picked up a cool little electronic device that you just know is running embedded Linux and should be hackable. Maybe a PTZ IP camera like this one I have here. And you take it apart and get a UART, but they lock you out of the bootloader and ruin your fun. Well in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to access that bootloader and even boot into a root shell in the embedded Linux OS so you can get on with your hacking project. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Josh with the WL Tech Blog. On the bench today, I've got a cool little embedded board with a MIPS processor. I'll be making a video about this specific device later, but it's pretty typical how it's set up. So figuring out the UART was easy enough, but a lot of these devices, you can't get into the bootloader. So we're gonna go ahead and power this up and you can see the boot up process. So the basic process is when the power gets applied to the device, it loads the bootloader off of the flash which takes a couple of moments to initialize and potentially gives you an opportunity to interrupt if it's configured to. And after that period, it will go ahead and load up the kernel and start booting. Now this device is pretty hacker friendly because they do let you interrupt the bootloader and they also have a root account with no password. So we can go ahead and log right in. And here we've got access to the Linux shell. Now they don't have the ability to save things in the bootloader. We would have to replace U-Boot in order to get that, which is kind of out of scope for this video. But I do want to show you how you can interrupt the normal boot process in order to get access to the bootloader if you're not able to, and also how you can boot into the Linux kernel without needing the root password to get in. So here I've got a magnifier looking at the board and the chip in the middle here is the flash now when you're looking at the flash there's going to be a dot or a groove you can kind of see the dot is right here and the pins are ordered in counterclockwise order so the one closest to that dot or immediately counterclockwise if it's a groove is pin one so it's one two three four on the top and then coming back five six seven eight on the bottom so the way that we can safely bypass this is by shorting pins five and six at just the right moment so since we have shell access on this device i can actually simplify my job here by rebooting in software instead of having to plug with one hand and be ready to short with the other so we're going to do a sleep five followed by a reboot this is going to give me five seconds to get ready before it actually does the reboot and we'll just watch on screen at the UART output to know when just the right moment is. Pretty much as soon as you see any output on the UART, that's the right time. And there we go. So it was unable to load the kernel and continue booting and it's dropped us right into the U-Boot console. So here you can see this one is configured with the boot delay of one, which is what allows us to interrupt it. Now, if you have one where the boot delay is set to zero, you can change that. And if the U-Boot has the ability to save, then you'll be able to interrupt the bootloader in the future. So to do that, you would do env set boot delay five and if you're able to write then you'll have a env save we don't have that on here so i'm not actually able to do that but if you have that available that will really simplify getting into the bootloader later so the next thing that we're going to do real quick is we're going to boot and bypass their init and boot directly into a shell. So you see here, we have our boot args, and this is what's sent to the kernel when it gets booted up. And the way that we bypass it is changing what they use for init. All right, so we're gonna do env set boot args. Then we're going to copy this whole thing, whoops. Copy that whole thing, and then we're going to paste it. 
and we're going to back up and we're going to change sbin init to slash bin slash sh and now when we go to boot this is going to boot directly into a shell now since it's skipped init it's going to be missing a lot of things you're going to need to mount your proc file system and some other things to do too much with it but this is plenty to get you to where you can look at the password file and shadow file maybe you need to do a password crack to get access to the device or who knows what else you're trying to do that's up to you but check us out we're going to do a boot and it's going to load the kernel and drops us right into a busy box shell And being an embedded device, you don't have all your normal stuff necessarily, but there's quite a bit here. Now this device is kind of weird because when it's in the full booted OS, there's no password on the root account, but that's done through an overlay that gets loaded in. They actually have, when you boot in here, they have a password in both the password and shadow files, but the way it works, the one in the password file would be the one that's used and that would be infinitely easier to crack if that was your goal. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. This is actually the device that I had on the bench. This is a brand new one that I'm going to do a disassembly and full hack on here in an upcoming video, so look forward to that for sure. And if you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them down below. Definitely subscribe if you like this kind of content. Check us out over on the Hackers Discord. Hmm. Check us out over on the Hackers Homestead Discord if you want to get involved in some of our cool projects. And we'll see you in the next video.